Okay, so let's talk about network configuration. So in my environment, I have some of my nodes that are VMs running in Overt, and I also have a physical Dell R610, which does the majority of the compute workload. So these VMs here, like OpenShift, um, IPA, and a couple of other test VMs that I have, they run on my actual R610. But when I was initially deploying the environment, I just wanted to test things. So I created a compute node in Overt, and a controller node in Overt, and my director also lives in Overt. So for this environment, it's one physical node, everything else is virtual. But what that means is that I need to have different network configurations because when I'm in Overt, if we look at this compute node, for example, I've just given it one NIC per network. I don't, I don't need to do bonds or anything complex. I can add as many NICs as I want within Overt and assign individual networks to them. So that's a much easier way to do things. So for these nodes, they use the multiple NICs template that we'll look at soon. But for my Dell R610, I don't have this many interfaces. I only have four. So I use one for the control plane and two in a bond and then VLANs on top of that bond. And that means that I don't need to have five or six or have many interfaces. I can just put the VLANs on top of the bond. So let's take a look at what that looks like from a template perspective. So for my deploy command, I have this file here called templates network environment overrides. And in this file, I define the templates that I'm going to use to actually configure these networks when they get to the node. Now, if you're familiar with Triple of the past or Red Hat OpenStack platform as it is today, it uses software configs, which is basically rendering that config, placing it in a software config in heat. And then that gets downloaded by the overcloud nodes and applied with OSNet config. In the new world of Triple O, we've moved away from using software configs and just using Ginger2 files for Ansible. So when Ansible runs, it uses this Ginger2 template file to render the OSNet config config.yaml file. And then it still uses OSNet config to apply that change. So the only difference is really server side from the orchestration perspective. The actual configuration is still the same. It's just moved from JSON to YAML. So in here, we can see my controller and compute roles both use the same multi nix dvr.j2 file. So I've copied these from the default and I've made minor changes to suit my environment. And I recommend doing that. Um, unless of course you have things that match the defaults. Uh, I mean, all power to you in that case. So let's have a look at this Ginger2 file. So in this Ginger2 file, we obviously need to understand Ginger2 first, otherwise this is quite confronting, but on our first interface, which will be NIC1, and we'll talk about mapping soon, but just know NIC1 for now, we're gonna configure the control plane. And we can tell because down here in IP addresses, we're using the control plane IP and the control plane subnet side up. Then below that, basically what we do is we iterate over the networks in role networks, put a pin in that. Provided that it's not an external or a tenant network, then we configure it as an interface with the NIC loop index. So we're just gonna index over our interfaces for as many interfaces as we have and then we'll apply networks to them. And then finally, when we get to the end, we're going to create a bridge, which will be BRX by default. So here's the bridge name. We could look up that variable, but by default it's BRX. Then we look up the variable net networks lower, external, and we get the MTU. And we do the same for the IP address, the CIDR, the host routes, and anything else we need to configure. So how does that compare to what I'm doing for my Dell then, where it needs to have bonds, it doesn't have that many interfaces. So we look at the bond VLANs file. It looks similar, it's a little less complicated. We're still configuring the control plane on NIC1, but then we create our, our bridge, which will be VRX. And in that bridge, we create a bond, so bond one, and we add NIC1 and NIC2 to that bond. So you could change this. Maybe you have some PFs from a 10 gig NIC that you want to add. So you might add P1, 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 P2, or you could stick with the NIC 
four, five, mix six, whatever, whatever combination you want, you can edit this file and create that. And then on top of that, we're just going to iterate over all of the networks in role networks and create VLANs. So cool. Let's have a look at role networks then to get a full understanding here. So that comes from roles data YAML. And we can see here for my compute Dell node. So this is just a copy of the default compute role. I've just copied that, called it something different to make sure that I can differentiate it from my other compute node. And that allows me to have custom network configurations and custom configurations that are specific for the Dell that might not apply to the overt compute node. So we can see under here that we have a network section. And these are the networks that are defined for that node. So we're going to have the external network, the internal API network, the tenant network, and the storage network. And if we compare that to, say, our controller, our controller has external, internal API, storage. It also has storage management, and it has tenant as well. So it has one extra network being assigned to it. Then if we look in the network data YAML, this is where we actually define what we want those networks to look like. We define our subnets, our allocation ranges, our VLANs, our MTUs, all that kind of information is defined in this file. So all of this for me is just default. I've left all of this default except for the MTUs. I changed them to 9000 so I can use jumbo frames. And I changed the external network definition. So that matches the VLAN subnet that are actually on my network. Now, this complicates things a little bit for me because this gives me two networks that are routable on my actual network. The 172.20-16 network and also the control plane network is also routable. So what I need to do then is I actually need to tweak the RP filter settings. So if we have a look in kernel args, I'm using extrasys CTL settings, so if you watched the previous video on triple O heat templates and how to find those parameters, this will make sense. If not, check that one out. Come back here, this will make sense. So then we're using net IPv4 conf all. I'm just setting all interfaces, RP filter equals zero. Now this, you could be more specific with this. You could narrow this down and say, I just want my external interface and my control plane interface to have RP filter zero. But because both of them have routes, I will have issues with reverse path routing if I don't set this. So I'm just setting it on all because it, it works for me in my lab. If you were in a production environment, you want, might want to be a bit more specific with how you configure that, or maybe just do it differently entirely. So back in the network data file, we can see that we have a name lower, and that name lower is internal API. And that also matches what we had in the roles data YAML file. So these ones here. Now these mappings, these mappings will appear in our config download, overcloud, group vars, compute Dell. So we can see here we have networks lower as well. So this is a mapping of those networks. Now, if we remember back to the template, it's actually looking up networks lower and then iterating over the networks. So if it does a look up on four networks lower external, it's going to get this name and then it's going to look up the values from the network RDML file and then apply that to that template. So let's just quickly take a moment to recap that. If we go back to our template, our J2 file, so we can see here we do four network in role networks. So we're iterating over the networks that are listed for that role in our role data YAML. We're doing a lookup vars. So we're looking up a, an Ansible variable for networks lower. And then we're iterating over this network value. So that's going to be external, internal API storage, etc., etc. And then it's creating that VLAN. So if we go to that compute node and we do So this is the osnet config file. We can see that we have nick1 being assigned to the control plane subnet, 192.168.24.90. Then we can see we have a bridge being created, which is brx. On that bridge, we have the bond, and we have nick2 and nick3 being added to the bond. Then we have all the VLANs being created, 
and through our external network we're also adding the default route which is what causes the RP filter issue. If we want to know what NIC1, NIC2, NIC3, etc. are, we can go back here and we can do osnetconfig-i. Now this shows the interface mappings. We can see NIC3 maps to ENO3, NIC1 to ENO1, NIC2 to ENO2. Makes sense here. You can make custom mapping files and have this however you want, or you can specify the actual physical names in your network template file. It's probably better to do NIC mappings because the network names can change depending on kernel versions, version of the server, version of the firmware. So it's better to have the NIC1, NIC2, NIC3. It's a little bit more reliable, but if you need to, you can create a custom mapping file. So if we look at IPOA, we can see we have those three interfaces up here with only ENO1 having an IP address, which makes sense. The others, uh, if we do appctl bond show, we can see are in the bond. We do OVS via CTL show. We can see under BRX, we have bond one with those two interfaces, ENO2 and ENO3. And then we have all of the VLANs. So these are all default VLANs with the exception of this one, which is my actual external VLAN that I've created in the network RDML file. And if we compare that to our controller, for example, uh, we can see the RP filter is set to zero on all. That makes sense. That means that the kernel parameter was actually applied. And we have a look at osnet config here, remembering that this one was using multiple NIC VLANs, not the bond with VLANs. So this, okay, camera died, but that's fine. We'll continue on, we will push on. So we, we can see in this, this one that we go through and we create an interface per network. Uh, the first one we have is the control plane interface, and then we go through and we just iterate over each of the networks that are assigned to that role until we get to the end where we assign BRX, and we give it the route and, and all the information that it needs for the external network. And again, we can check the, the mappings here. We can see how that maps in this environment and we can see how the names change. Like for example, on my, on my compute node, I don't have EMP5S0. It goes to EMP6S0, but that's actually NIC5. And that's what I was referring to before. We'll go to that node and have a look. So we can see that NIC5 is EMP11S0 here. So that's a really random name. It's because I chopped and changed these networks a bit and played around with different configurations. But that's what I mean by it's probably better off to stick with NIC1, NIC2, NIC3, NIC4.5 because the names can change. It's not always predictable. If I created another VM in overt, those nicknames are not going to be EMP11S0. I would need to change that for specific naming to work. So just to quickly recap, we use Ginger2 template files to render the osnet config config.yaml file. The Ginger2 file does a lookup on Ansible variables for networks lower and the network. The network is defined by the networks in the roles network yaml file, the roles data yaml file, and the subnets, MTU, VLANs, etc. are defined in the network data.yaml file. So you can see how you could use this construct for basically any network you can imagine. Maybe one use case would be that I create an extra network. And on that extra network, maybe I'm just going to do some Prometheus monitoring. So maybe I want to set up an endpoint for Kube Prometheus to scrape. But I don't want that to be associated with anything else on OpenStack. So I could create that as a custom composable network, add it to the roles that it needs to be added to in roles data YAML, and add the information about it to the network data YAML file. From there, I just need to make sure that I have a network override file defined. So I have this file defined and I make, need to make sure I point the roles at the right template for the networks that they need. So in my case, multiple NIC VLANs works for the compute role and controller role since they're both in overt, but compute Dell needs the bond with VLANs to work. So I hope that's helpful in explaining how you can create composable networks and how you can understand how all the different components need to come together to render that config YAML file.
and hopefully it helps with any troubleshooting that you need to do as well.